We have a few matters that we need to handle outside the presence of the jury, so they're going to have a few moments if you'll let them know that. If they want to go get coffee, they could probably, I mean, it's probably going to be another 15 minutes. Okay? I don't know if they have coffee in the room. Not usually. It's usually in their first break they like it, but if we can get something, they can get something. Okay, if they want something like that, if we can accommodate them. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thanks. Yes, you may. Do we know anything yet? Okay. You say jury instruction 3.7C? Is it 7C? Because I don't have that instruction. I don't see it as an instruction, but maybe new. I'll look it up in my other book. I think it's 3.7. 
3.6C? All right, and I'm happier with that because there is no 3.7C. <laughs> What page? Yeah, I have that. Okay. Um, sure. I have it here, but I guess it'll be easier. Mm -hmm. 
It's on both sides, but I... Someone down there and get it. No, I'm kidding. We'll get her up. Are you waiting out there? That's how we know they just pulled the car. You're good.
Um, do you need a moment or are we ready? Okay. Um, then um, we'll go ahead and um, bring in Ms. Osborne and that'll be for purposes of the proper. So Ms. Osborne, if you'll come forward. Ms. Patty, if you step up before the court to be sworn. You have a seat in the witness chair. And ma'am, one seated if you'll scoot that chair forward. Do adjust that microphone and do talk into that microphone. Okay, um, Mr. McMaster. Thank you. Good morning, ma'am. Hi. If you would, please state your name for the record and spell your last name. Amanda Osborne, O-Z-B-U-R-N. Do you know the defendant, uh, Brandon Bradley? Yes. How do you know Mr. Bradley? Um, I was friends with him for a period of time. Right. And what uh, period of time were we talking about? Uh, like six months prior to... The shooting of Deputy Bill? Yes. Uh, you had a, a social relationship with Mr. Bradley, spent some time with him? Yes. Do you recall an incident in December of 2011 when you were with Mr. Bradley in a vehicle traveling from 192 to the O'Galley area? Yes. And did you have an occasion to see several police uh, vehicles during that uh, trip? Yes. And what was Mr. Bradley's reaction to seeing the police vehicles? He was nervous. Had you had conversations with Mr. Bradley where he had uh, told you that he was aware that he had outstanding arrest warrants? Um, yes. Do you know how many? No. Uh, did Mr. Bradley at any time ever tell you what it was he would do if he were apprehended by the police or the police attempted to apprehend him? Try to run and get away. Did he also tell you that uh, he was, if he ever got pulled over, they're going to have to hold court in the streets because I'm going out like a soldier? I don't recall. Do you recall giving a statement to the police on March 9, 2012, a couple of days after the shooting of uh, Deputy Jackson? Yes, you may.
you. Um, Mr. McMaster, you may continue. Ms. Osborne, do you remember giving a statement to agents of the Upper Bar County Sheriff's <laughs> Office on March 9th, 2012? Yes. That was here at this courthouse? Yes. Do you recall making the statement to them under oath that uh, he even said, if I ever get pulled over, they're going to have to hold court in the streets because I'm going out like a soldier? I don't remember. You don't remember whether you said that or not? No. Would it refresh your recollection to be able to look at a transcript of uh, uh, I suppose. Yes, you may. Showing you what is the uh, transcript of the March 9, 2012 interview. I'm directing you to page 7 if you can start right here on line 16 and read through there and talk to the top part of this. Do I have to read it out loud? No, I could not hear the part of the transcript. Line 16, page 7. That's yes. the bottom of the page and the first couple of lines of the second. Thank you. Thank you. Have you had an opportunity to read that? Yes, sir. Does it refresh your recollection as to whether or not you said that to the agents back on March 9th? Yes. You do recall saying that, correct? Right? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you know, Mr. Bradley, to uh, possess firearms during the time that you knew him? Yes. What color and what kind of firearm was it that you saw him have? It was black. It was a handgun. I don't really know a lot about guns. Approach yes, you may. Showing you what has been admitted in the evidence of State's Exhibit 8. Can you tell me if the weapon that you saw Mr. Bradley with looked anything like that one? Yes. Thank you. No further questions. Okay, cross examination. <clears throat> Osborne, do you uh, remember reviewing your, the interview that you gave to law enforcement with the same transcript that you were giving this morning? Yes. You had a chance to look at that from your deposition. That. Mm -hmm. And um, isn't it true that a lot of the things you said, specifically the statement that Mr. McMaster asked you about what Mr. Bradley said about going to the streets, that you don't even remember Mr. Bradley making that statement, correct? That's correct. And a lot of the things you told law enforcement you yourself say you shouldn't be looked at in a credible way, right? Yes. Including that statement. Especially that statement. Especially that statement. Thank you. Okay. All of it is right. Okay. Um, Ms. Osborne, um, we're going to have you step outside for a few moments. Okay. And then we're going to bring you back in, and that will be in the presence of the jury. I am going to have to have you re-sworn because I want you sworn in their presence. Okay. Okay? So if you'll go step outside, we'll call you in a few moments. <clears throat> okay, this is in reference to, this is the proffer. <clears throat> that was the proffer in reference to this court's order regarding defendant's motion in limine three and motion in limine four and that was with regard to this court's ruling in paragraph two um, argument by the state okay response from the defense Quoting her, especially that statement uh, pertaining to the statement that you can hold court in the streets, put off the soldier, and make comments, especially that statement, not to look at the incredible. Uh, in fact, the saying that jurors should not believe that statement, no one should believe that statement. Uh, it's pretty clear that the judge has no condition, got no memory that Mr. Uh, Bradley ever made that statement to her. Uh, this again is going to, to 
not a couple of different states in the state. She's not going to let me think. So she should not be confronted with that in front of the jury that at some other time she gave that particular statement to the law enforcement. The court is never allowed the state to ask her, as you call making this specific statement to law enforcement, and we are asking for a instruction at that time that that statement is heard by the juror. Essentially, that should not be given subsequent knowledge to all of these specific constitutional rights. I think to that specific statement. Judge, I do continue to object also in regards to Ms. Osmond going to testify that Mr. Bradley had a firearm with him during the six months they were hanging out in Franklin prior to March 6th. It's a completely irrelevant fact. There is no relevancy whatsoever to whether or not Mr. Bradley had a gun on him six months prior, a month prior, six days prior, or a day prior. It's completely irrelevant. The only relevance is whether or not on March 6th, 2012, at or around the time that the girl was shot, whether or not Mr. Bradley had a firearm at that point. There's been testimony already by Mr. Kirchner, and the state introduced Mr. Bradley's statement, and we've heard that statement. Mr. Bradley indicates there was a firearm in the car. He is charged with it. Having another witness testify to it is completely cumulative. There's completely no probative value to that testimony whatsoever. It's unfairly prejudicial, and we ask the court to exclude that and not have Ms. Osmond testify to that. Can I have a moment, Judge? Yes, you may. Judge, if the court would give us a, I would need to make a copy of it. I don't have one here. I don't have a copy of her deposition. We would like to have a copy. I'd like to make it part of the record. There was a transcript of Ms. Osmond's deposition taken on February 6, 2014. Specifically, we asked the court to review page 36, line 5 through 10. That's where she indicates that she's a testimony. May I approach? Yes, you may. Her statement, meaning the statement she gave to law enforcement, not to look at it being credible, to look at the influence of various drugs. She was on drugs at night when we were proceeding before going into court. She also indicates on page 20, line 16 and 22, in reference to the statement that was in a whole court street, she indicates that she doesn't remember saying that to law enforcement. Going over to page 21, line 19, 20 through 25, and on page 22, she doesn't remember that it's not a credible thing to say. On page 27, line 6 to 8, there's no memory of Mr. Bradley ever making that statement. Page 37, lines 1 through 16, she doesn't remember Mr. Bradley ever saying that. And page 38, lines 9 through 17, says she can't recall the exact words. The only thing she knew for sure was that Mr. Bradley said he was drunk. And on page 29, line 7 to 13, that's when she starts reading the transcript of the interview with law enforcement. She had to put it down, and she indicated she does not agree with what's in it. Again, goes back to saying a lot of portions of that interview do not look at being credible. Okay, that goes to the weight 
not the admissibility. So I'm going to overrule that objection. Now, um, no, the limiting instruction that we're asking, the basis of it is not actually uh, one to one to alpha. And we're asking that as to, in the event that she's saying, to call the gun that carried. So she has an independent record. She's claiming an independent record. She's claiming that it has to be a statement about the bullet board in the streets. She doesn't have an independent record. So what they're impeaching her with, the state, is uh, a state of making police and uh, under Delgado, state versus Delgado, Santos at 497, so the second level, uh, denying that being a state of police is not in another proceeding uh, which exempted from the definition of hearsay. Testifies about comments about the going court of the streets. As soon as she says that, the court uh, say as to the statement of the limitation of uh, that she just made of uh, attributing to the defendant's comments that. Uh, about okay, I kind of wrote something down. Ma'am? I kind of wrote something down. I'll read it to you. The testimony just given by the witness should not be considered as a proven fact, but for the purpose of impeaching the witness. And so, because we're presuming that the jury understands what that means, impeachment means uh, matters. Should I, I should say impeachment of the what? Say it again. Credibility. The trouble is, I think the instruction needs to be more limited than what the court read because it's not her testimony, it's that small sliver of her testimony. Well, that's why you give it right after she says it. I want the defense to object, and then I'll give that object based on the court's prior ruling, and then I can give, I said, the testimony just given by this witness. Attributing comments to the defendant, assuming that's all that the chief of the Okay, I can add attributing comments to the defendant. Or you want me to say the statement? I think it needs to be limited just to that small portion. Well, how? Um, yes, I agree. So tell me how you want me to do that. You want me to use the word statement instead of testimony? Just a statement that she made to the police officer, to the police on March 9th, 2012. Okay, so we're going to broaden it to the whole statement. That's, I don't know if you want to broaden it to the whole statement. I was going to say the testimony she just gave, because it's only that one portion. It's not everything else. That one portion being the statement she claimed that they had been all the street. That That's why I could say the statement just given by the witness attributing comments Well, when you say out-of-court statements, they mean the juries don't understand that. All right, then. The statement <coughs> just given by the witness attributing comments to the defendant. I like that better. Should not be considered as a proven fact, but for purpose of impeachment of this witness. And then you want me to say impeachment means? That it may be considered by you Um, would you say it may be and information that may be considered by you in assessing the believability or the credibility of the witness? Maybe we should look at Black's Law Dictionary as to what impeachment means. Impeachment means information to be.
I'm going to read the whole thing. Did you say believability and credibility? Believability or credibility. I didn't know if it was an and or an or. Okay, um, this is what I have written so far. The statement just given by this witness attributing comments to the defendant should not be considered as a proven fact, but for the purpose of impeachment of the witness. Impeachment means information you may consider in determining the believability or credibility of the witness. Is the state satisfied with that? No, I have. It's okay. I have the big one. Is it acceptable by the defense by the state? Yes, ma'am. Okay, acceptable by the defense. Okay. Without waiving our previous objection. Of course. When if she does testify to that, then what I want you to do is object and say, Judge, based on your court court's prior ruling, and then I'll give that. You'll stand up and do that. I'll give that statement at that time. Um, I'm going to file this for purposes of the record. I'm going to file this with the court. Yes, Your Honor. So it's part of the record. Thank you. The transcript of Amanda Osborne dated February 6, 2014. Okay, anything else we need to address before we bring the jury into the court? Okay, I think we're ready to bring them in. They start arguing. I can put it up here in the file if you want. (coughs) 